Welcome back to the Discus channel here on YouTube. This is Reinhard Nieder and with this clip I want to start guiding you to build a nanoparticle. So this will be the first clip in a series of several clips in which we build a nanoparticle initially from scratch making a small object which we will then increase in its complexity to build that. So I suggest that you build a separate folder for this so on windows go possibly maybe to discus workshop and make a folder underneath that let's call this for simplicity here nanoparticle and then we navigate into that add the unix system of course just open a terminal go to the parent directory and make a new subfolder and subdirectory called nanoparticle similarly on Mac and we will store all the data or everything that we need for this nanoparticle here in this folder. So the idea is that we want to build a nanoparticle and we want to make it of increasingly complex shape for example here the first thing we might just do is build a simple cube that we want to rotate around and so have any kind of complex little cube that would be the easiest shape. Of course, another complex simple shape that we might want to do is build here is a sphere of arbitrary diameter. Later on you might want to decide I want to make this sphere ellipsoidal rather than Thing. And so we will increase this in the complexity in its shape. We will eventually introduce um, defects here on the surface or in the inside of this nanoparticle, change the stoichiometry, sort the atoms inside. We may also decorate the surface, place different molecules on the surface of this nanoparticle, eventually then calculate the powder pattern respectively the pair distribution function of this particle and finally we will calculate then the pattern in a refinement cycle against actual data to see how this refinement works and that's all what we're really interested in comparing our model against experimental data. So what we need to do is start the discus program here and There we go. In the Discus program, we now need to navigate here to this folder nanoparticle. So let me type here a CD space and then I copy this, control C, paste it here with a control shift V into the window. And now I type, type a return to be now in this folder. And to build this nanoparticle, rather than to type all the commands interactively here in Discus, I will start a editing of a macro file. Macro file is nothing but a small, easygoing text file with no annotations in it. And within this text file, we will just simply type commands for the Discus program, just as if you were using the commands interactively. The advantage is we can then change this macro file, run it again, modify it and build it more increasingly complex rather than to have to retype all the commands again. For the fun of it, I decided to build this nanoparticle, a small salt crystal of sodium chloride. Just for the fun of it, it doesn't really matter what kind of chemistry we do here initially. So to build that in discus, we need to, of course, know what is the crystal structure of sodium chloride. And in retrospect for any other object that you might want to build, you can look up the parent structure as long as you assume that the nanoparticle will be of a structure close to the parent structure. And sources to do so are, for example, here the crystallography open database that has a lot of SIF files for crystal structures that you can look up. There is, of course, here the Cambridge Crystallographic Data Center that has a huge database of crystal structures inside. 
and other databases. The American Mineralogist has a database for mostly minerals in that. Actually here, we don't really need that since the structure of sodium chloride is simple enough to be known by heart. And so we will start here in our editor to build the sodium chloride structure eventually. But right now, let's just start this macro that we need for the discus program. And notice here this suite on the right hand side. We are now at the top level at the suite prompt. So we need to go into the discus section first. That's the part where we build structures. So typically a first command in such a thing would be discus and let's add to that automatically here an exit command. This combination discus and then eventually at some point exit will allow you to always start here at the suite prompt, do something in the ex discus section and with the exit go back to that. I like to put in here a comment just so that I know what this exit is all about. Makes it easier to find if you put ample comments in there. As a matter of fact, we should add here a comment at the top of the file as well. Um, and we call this a nanoparticle.mac and add here as a comment Just right now, short build a nanoparticle. We'll add more comment to it as needed. So let's save this. And we will save this to, where are we? Here into the nanoparticle and we will call this nano for short dot Mac, just keep it as simple text and make sure you type the nano dot Mac since especially on a Windows system, the Windows tends to add an extension to it, which we don't really want to. We want to make sure that this is called a dot Mac file. And with the save, we've now saved this. And let's quickly test it and see if this macro works. So we go here to our discus suite window. And since we're in the right directory, what we first can do is a system command ls for listing. The ls is a Unix command that says listing, directory, content, show, and you see there is our nano.mac. So we should be ready to run this. We type this at sign nano.mac. The space at the end is not needed. I tend to do it in order to make it a little more readable to see what is really performed. You see, wonderful, all the commands in this macro are executed. There's no error message and we're back here at the suite prompt. Wonderful, all right. So now we're ready to go and build this first nanoparticle. So what we need to type here in the discus program is I like to add here a comment line in between. It's not very important. Now that we're in the discus section, there is a read command and we add a comment there. This is command, the read command goes into my menu to read structures where we can read a CIF file, we can read a shell X output file, the instruction file from shell X, we can read a file from RMC profile. And of course, we can read the discus specific files. And that is what we will do here. We will use a file with a command cell. We want to read this and let's call this nacl.cell. And that instruction here will enable discus to read the sodium chloride cell file, actually the asymmetric unit, expand it then to a full unit cell. That's what the cell command is all about. And with that, we will have a single crystal structure of just one unit cell of the sodium chloride. Of course, we need to build this sodium chloride structure. So let's make a new window here. And the file structure for a discus file format is a simple ASCII text file. 
a title file sodium chloride or so for example we put in there this is the only mandatory file line in this file next we do space group and the space group of sodium chloride is of course fm minus 3m the cubic space group fm3 bar m and i use symbols that correspond to the international tables the hermann morgan symbol a three bar operation is written as a minus three and that's all we need there. Now we need the unit cell parameters, the lattice parameters for the structure 5.64, comma, 5.64, comma, 5.64, comma, 90.0, comma, 90.0, comma, 90.0. Yes, you need to type all six parameters, even though it is a cubic structure. That was some 30 years ago, a design choice by myself to make programming easier for me rather than to have to distinguish between the space group and then, for example, a cubic structure. Of course, it would be enough to have just the A lattice parameter. Anyway, not that much of a typing there that we need to do. So the next line in the header is atoms. That signifies that the main header of the structure file is finished. And now we're ready to put in the atoms here, sodium, which is going to be placed at the position zero. So this means we have a sodium atom in fractional coordinates at 0 0.00, 0 0.00, 0 0.00, 0 0.00 at the corner of the unit cell. The 0 0.5 here at the end is the atomic displacement parameters in units of B. So if you want to use it for the X-ray parameters, a small u, you have to divide this by 8 pi squares. But don't worry about it, this because we'll do this internally, calculate with that. So now we need to add the chlorium at chlorine 0 0.5. And actually, here what I could do is, I will not do it right now, but we could do is, if you divide the parameters with a comma within the cell file, you can actually replace the constant number of the atom coordinates by a numerical expression. And this numerical expression could also include parameters variables that will be replaced by current actual values we'll use that later on when we want to refine something right now just let's keep it simple 0 0.5 0 and also same isotropic thermal parameter we save this and we're now in the same folder let's call this sodium chloride.cell And now we have saved here the sodium chloride structure to this file. Our main macro reads that now with a read command going into the read menu. And then the cell command will instruct Discus to read the file sodium chloride.cell and expand this asymmetric unit to a full content. So a quick test here. If you run this macro, notice I just used the arrow up key on my keyboard to recall the previous command. And now an enter will do that. And um, interesting. Oh, I need to save this here first. See, I'm doing this on the fly. So you need to save the file, of course, and rerun it. And now we've got an interesting error message here, invalid space group and lens parameters. So the program has detected a contradiction between the space groups and the parameters. Likely I did a typing error here in my input file, 5.64. Oh yeah, this should of course be there, not 65, but 5.64, 5.64, 90, 90, 90. So for a cubic system, of course, A, B, and C must be equal or the angles must be 90 degrees. And as you notice here, there have been many error checks built into the Discus program to see if there's any kind of typing error that might lead to rather unexpected results. So here the program complains that we had the invalid 
space group analysis parameter constant combination in the file sodium chloride and this error occurred in the line nine of our main top level macro and that allows us here to find okay in line nine somewhere here that's where an error occurred and then we can have a look at this mac input file sodium chloride dot cell where then it was easy to detect that one of the lattice parameters was wrong so let's save this make sure this file is saved okay and let's try this again voila wonderful works fine see now the program reads the cell file here expands it recognizes this is space group fm3 bar m space group number 225 and then you get a little information on the lattice parameters on the unit cell volume the metric tensor and the same in reciprocal space. Let me add here a quick command to say show atom comma all and with this command Discus will show you on the screen the atom coordinates and a few further parameters of all atoms in there. So let's save this, go back and I like to expand make my Discus window wider since there's a lot of output produced by the show atom command. We run this macro again. You see now the new command show atom.all will print all the atoms here. We have four sodium atoms, four chlorine atoms, the sodiums as expected at 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 half, 1 half, and so on. You find here the numbering scheme of the atoms. There are eight atoms in this unit cell. None of them are in a molecule. That's why this is always zero. And the property flags are used within the discourse program. And we'll expand on that in further clips to look at different properties. N simply means it's a normal atom rather than a void, an atom that is missing from the structure. There are properties to indicate whether this atom is inside a molecule or not. If the atom is close to the surface, that we will use for the decoration of the surfaces. And there's also information out here on the surface characteristics of an atom. Notice right now there's just a underscore here. There's no surface property associated with these atoms. So this one unit cell basically is right now, as far as discus is concerned, a finite object. Yet discus really thinks of this object as a single unit cell with periodic boundary conditions of an infinitely sized perfect crystal. And eventually once we shape the object, then the surface properties will change. And basically what you see here on the screen is about what happens if we now save the structure to a file and this file format allows me then to store a lot more information specifically to disorder particles than is possible in a SIF file. Keep also in mind that a SIF file is really designed only to keep the content of a single unit cell while here we want to expand the structure to a large block of several unit cells eventually to shape our nanoparticle and that is not that suitable for a SIF. For that reason the internal discus file format still has its merits. All right, so we now have most of the atoms here. Let's just start to modify this. Of course we want to do more than just one single unit cell. And so let's make this a little bigger. We can add to the command on the cell command, we can add a number of unit cells to which we want to expand this initial structure. So if we add here to this line, comma, and then a number of unit cells in the x, y, and c direction, let's make it for the meaning right now a small object, 3, comma, 3, comma, 3. So now this will be expanded to a cubic block of 3 by 3 by 3 unit cells. Let's save it and run it. Voila, now you notice we have a total of 216 atoms, 8 times 27 atoms in all these unit cells. And as an important piece of information that you need to look at later on, notice here 
we have in the first eight atoms that is the unit cell at the lower left bottom corner of the crystal then the next unit cell is one here that has all the x coordinates increased by one unit cell the third one here will then again be the one at now positive unit cells and thereafter in the next nine unit cells the y coordinate has been increased so the sorting of unit cells in this case is that the fastest sorting of the atoms which are in a linear array the fastest sorting is the x coordinates then a next row along the y coordinates follows later on a next layer along the c coordinates is following so that is sometimes useful to know this sequence of the atoms in this internal structure the next thing i'd like to do is let's expand and really look at this crystal we want to see is this a really nice cubic crystal so we will go to the plot menu and i will add lots of comments here to make sure that it's easier to read most of the menus will in this course go in this combination a command that enters the plot menu and then at the end an exit command that leaves the menu what we need to do is here we need to tell the structure the discourse program that we want to plot the crystal structure with the jmol program jmol program is a javascript an open source program that is very fast on the structure simulation and i've actually combined the discourse distribution with a jmol installation we will now select all atoms and that means you can we will display all the atoms in the structure if you want to you could limit yourself here to display only the sodium atoms you could limit yourself to only the chlorine atoms or there's also selection rules where we can apply the properties for example we could apply to display only those atoms that are close to the surface we'll do that later on there's also a command called extend and that may be used to limit the plot of a very very large structure to a limited range if you build a structure here expanding the crystal to let's say 200 by 200 by 200 unit cells and you only want to check a small section since jmol cannot really handle 5 million atoms and then you can use this command to plot only a limited extent of the structure along the x y and z direction the last thing we need to do is here we define an out file and this is a remnant of the history of the discus program initially this command used to be out f when I started programming the discus program, all the commands were only four letter words to save a little bit on bits and bytes here. So as a historic remembrance, this command is still called out file instead of output file. And we need to define here name. Let's call it sodium chloride underscore plot dot sif. The name is not really important. Discus will write a small sif file here, a miniature sif file. As a matter of a habit, I started to type here in this plotting section a part underscore plot to the file name, simply to make sure that I do not accidentally override an original sodium chloride.sif file and lose that information. Finally, I now type here run command, and the run command, if you use this without any parameters, will simply write this sif file. And then you could use any of the available structure display programs like Diamond, Atoms, and um, any other program that can display a SIF file. Here we will actually run an interactive plot. So we use the command plot. And the optional commands in this course are most of them nowadays written as the name of the optional parameters. 
followed by a colon and then parameters to this specific optional parameter here this would be a interactive plot we save this structure and run the command again so simply add nano.mac and now you notice here jmol takes a little moment to show up there we are we have now nicely the sodium chloride structure if i use the jmol program it's fairly self-explanatory in the way you can click the left mouse button and then rotate the structure around and you see it's really nicely the fcc structure of sodium chloride with here at the bottom corner we have a chlorine atom sodium chlorine here the centering side again a chlorine atom what you could do is here under display go to atoms and then change the radius to for example 100 van der waals radius and then you get a structure that displays the atoms at their full radius and you see now we have a nice little cube here our first little cubic nanoparticle i can rotate this guy around in any kind of fashion i want to and that's it so we've managed now to build a cubic nanoparticle a very very tiny nanoparticle indeed let me stop this back, uh, clip here and we'll continue in further clips to go more into details to now expand it to variable sizes put in different shapes and we will work up on that i hope you enjoyed this clip and i look forward to seeing you here on the youtube channel in the near future again